Thank you for that beautiful saxophone and also for the reading of our scripture today. I would like to say thank you to all our viewers all over the world, my family, my children, above all to all of you. In the annals of human history, from Genesis up to the book of Revelation, depicts a tremendous battle, the physical battle and the spiritual battle. The physical battle was, uh, was uh, experienced and witnessed when Adam and Eve was driven out from the Garden of Eden. There was jealousy among them, Cain was jealous with his brother Abel. And that was the very cause of killing and fighting that Adam and Eve had experienced and had witnessed. And you could just imagine, my friends and brethren today, the falling of the leaves. The tears, the experience of sadness, the bitter experience of Adam and Eve had been experienced the time when Cain was jealous with his brother because God said you should offer an offering with blood. Abel, Obey the commandments of the Lord. While Cain also offered presumptuously the fruit of the land. When Abel prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, here is my offering before you. And the Lord sent fire from heaven and consume the offering of Abel. And Cain was jealous with his brother. He brought his brother out, and he picked up his wood, and hit his brother, and killed him right there and then. God said, Cain, where is your brother? And Cain said, Am I my brother's keeper? But the Lord said to Cain, The blood of your brother, which splattered on the ground, cried before me for justice. My dear brethren and friends today, we are facing not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the power, against the ruler of darkness, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Now what are we supposed to do, my friends? God's counsel from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 up to 17. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil days. There are seven basic elements needed for us Christians how to stand, how to defend ourselves by the power of God 
in this spiritual battle. It is not just an ordinary battle, my friends. It is a spiritual battle that you will experience, you and me today. And if we are not well equipped with the power of God, we will be defeated. Try to see a soldier. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Try to see that soldier in the olden times. The helmet, the shield, the breastplate, the spear, and also everything that is his body is being protected. Christians today must be like that soldier wearing the breastplate, the helmet of righteousness, and the breastplate that supports and protects his body, all the organs of his body. Did you remember the, the time when David was challenged by that, by that Palestinian, Palestinian giant? That Palestinian giant is like that soldier being flushed, and you could see today, with complete uniform, but he was defeated when he dealt his helmet and right the stone hit at the very forehead of that giant, stuck on his, on his forehead, and he died just right there. We Christians today, my friends, will be like that Palestinian soldier. If we are not ready, if we are not careful in our spiritual life, we open the avenues of the soul. Satan will strike that dart and will put us down. Number one, the full armor of God that Christians are called to put on consists of the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Now I would like to relate to you the interpretation of this. The whole armor of God, let us go through the different pieces of the armor of God, then apply it to our life. Belt of truth, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist in Ephesians 6, 14. The belt of truth anchors every other part of God's full armor. To defeat the enemy, you must start with the truth. God said, in order to defeat the enemy, we must stand for the truth. We must believe and we should try to use the truth from the Bible. God said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Some translations of the verse use the, the, the praise, having girded your loins with truth. In modern vernacular, the word loin is rare. This refers to the lower back and also includes the area around the privates. In ancient times, my friends, it was common for men to wear long draping robes, but they troubled them, wrap up, so they could work or, or fight. This was known as girding up your loins. Number three, it is known as breastplate of righteousness. 
In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness means being made right. The story of Joseph, you must have heard and you must have read the experience of Joseph. He was brought to Egypt and put to par. Bought him from the Ismailite, Ismailite, serba, Ismailite merchant. And he was given a big responsibility inside his, inside his palace. And Joseph, from Genesis 39, 6 to 7, was a goodly person and well favored. In the master's wife, cast her eyes upon Joseph. She said, lie with me. That was the statement of Potiphar's wife. But Joseph refused the begging of Potiphar's wife. And Joseph said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? Sometimes we Christians will easily succumb to the, to, to the temptations. You know why? Because we lack the Spirit of God that will sustain and strengthen us day by day. We are defeated by the works of the devil. But obeying God is protective shield against being wounded by, by sin. Obeying God. The story of Moses in the wilderness. It is found in Exodus 12, 40. Moses, according to the word of God, he was the weak, the meekest man on earth. But Moses was being challenged by his fellow men, there were 600,000 Israelites on foot marching aside from children. They were complaining to Moses, why did you bring us here in the wilderness without much food and without water? But Moses maintained his composure and Moses was considered by God as protective shield against being wounded by sin in the enemy. He was considered as a man who had the power and strength and patience because of the murmuring of the Israelites during his time. Gospel of peace in Ephesians 6.15. Peace, my friend, is an attribute of Lord's character. God said, my peace I give to you. My peace I live with you. That is the character of the Lord. He wants his people to have peace with each other. Peace that giveth understanding and peace that will send it men into the presence of God because God is the God of peace. A person's sense of peace is ruined when carry anxiety and worry with them. What keeps us anchored is the pre preparation of the gospel of peace. That is in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart.
During ancient times, Roman soldiers carried, carried heavy shells made of tanned animals hide. These shells were dipped into the water before battle so that the wet wet hide could extinguish fiery darts. The enemy is using darts, arrows with fire that when they hit the enemy, the enemy will suddenly die because of the dart that is being strike at them. And remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. 17. This yield of faith of a Christian must also be regularly deep in the water of God's word to remain firm against evil. Our Christian shield must always be deep in water. Water which symbolizes the word of God so that the darts of the enemy that will strike you will be extinguished with the wet word of God that will sustain that person's lives day by day. The helmet of salvation in Ephesians chapter 17. Now is the time for God's people, according to the writings of Ellen White, to show themselves through the principles. When the religion of Christ is most held in contempt, when his law is most despised, to gather warmth from the coldness of others, courage from their cowardice, and unity from their treason, to stand in defense of truth, when the majority forsake us, to fight the battles of the Lord, when champions are only few. This is known as to stand, to stand in the principles of God's word and God's truth. However, salvation involves long process of sanctification as well as holiness. It is the process of sanctification. Sanctification could not only be achieved for just one moment. It is a lifetime process. If you want to be sanctified by the goodness and the loving favor of God, if you want to receive that process of sanctification, you must constantly be connected and be one with God. And it says here, salvation involves long process and as well as holiness. What do you mean by holiness? Some people think, some Christians believe, once they are holy, they will go straight to heaven. Some Protestants believe in that, that when they are holy, they will go straight to heaven. Holiness, my friends and brethren, is not, a rapture. Holiness is constant living and reading by the word of God. Living by faith, relying upon God with unquestioning confidence and trusting in his love. Salvation for a Christian it needs sanctification and holiness. Remember the story of Enoch. Enoch was walking with the Lord. Walking with God, it means obeying the commandments 
in the instructions of God. When you walk with the Lord, you are listening to the counsels and advice of the Lord. When you are walking with the Lord, you are listening upon his voice. When you are walking with the Lord, my friends, your life must be constant. Your life must be in consonance with the will, will, will and guidance of God. Holiness is not a rapture. It is listening in daily reading the word of God. However, salvation involves a long process of sanctification according as faith chooses us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame. Ephesians 1 verse 4. We must be holy and we must be blameless and we must be firm. Holy, your life considered by you sometimes as a holy figure. But holiness and the proclamation that you're holy must really be affirmed by the word of God, but God himself. Holiness, a holy man is a man like Elijah. He was brought to heaven by the chariot of fire. Moses was buried in that cave of Machpelah. But the Lord resurrected Moses. In a, he was seen in that mount of transfiguration because Moses lived and Elijah lived in Enoch. Live a holy and a perfect life. What kind of life we are supposed to have today? My dear friends and brethren, what perfection that is needed in order for that Christians to be like the stature and the expectations of God. We could not achieve an absolute perfection but according to the word of God, we could achieve relative perfection by living and trusting upon his word and living upon the fullness of God. The sword of the spirit we are tempted the sword of the spirit Additionally, is the only piece of armor that combines defensive and offensive capabilities. When the devil tried temptation, after temptation against him, Jesus used the word of God to protect him. Heavenly procedure, my friends and brethren, how to put on the whole armor of God one way to put on the armor of God is by having faith in him. If you feel hesitant about your faith, ask the Lord for help through supplication. Your world should be filled with verses and strengthen your faith. Additionally, make sure you don't place your faith in a circumstance but in God's character. A boy one day was asking his mother while looking at that aquarium. Mother, mother, he said, why is it, why is it that I could see a big spider inside this aquarium? That aquarium, my friends, was thoroughly sealed. And the mother was surprised. A big spider inside the aquarium that even a small mustard seed could hardly enter that aquarium. Later on, they realized 
that a small insect enters inside that aquarium until it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and makes people surprised, even the owner of that aquarium. My dear brethren and friends today, sin is like a small spider that enters into your soul, enters into my soul. And if we are not careful, that spider will destroy you, will bite you, and will make you suffer the consequence of the sting. Don't put your security and identity in your own hands. And remove anything that steals your confidence in Christ. Studying God's word and the Bible can help us focus on him. God will always protect us when we put all the armor of God we aren't asking God to end our battles. We are asking him for the strength to persevere through them on our journey to eternal life. The goodness, power, and wisdom of God on in whom we now trust in him through the Bible verses. At my age, at my age, my friends, Wake me up at the middle of the night. And I could say to you with legibility the 66 books of the Bible. I could recite the 66 of the Bible at my age today. But sometimes there are some brethren I don't know if we, could, if we could find those brethren in this church. Because I know that you are constant in your reading with the word of God. When you ask him about the verses, he could not say to you. Where could you find the Ten Commandments? He said, I don't know, Pastor. Where could you find the words that God mentioned about? the food that is supposed to be eaten, and that God give us the instructions of the food that we are supposed to eat. Where could you find in the Bible the instructions that God told his disciples how to pray? In Matthew chapter 6. My dear brethren and friends today, I am appealing to each one of you. Whoever, whoever you are, whatever your profession in life, the Bible is considered by God as a bridge. It is a light. It is a manual in order for man to be guided until he reaches the point of perfection. The Bible contains the mind of God. The state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are true. Its decisions are immutable. Ready to be wise, Believe it to be safe and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is a pilgrim staff, a pilot compass, a soldier's weapon, and a Christian charter. Read it slowly. Patiently and reverently.
It contains a highest responsibility. It will be, it will be given you in life. It is a mine of wealth and a paradise of pleasure. Read it slowly, reverently, and patiently. Here is paradise restored. Heavens opened and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is the grand figure. It contains a highest responsibility. Reward the greatest labor and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. My dear brethren and friends today, read the word of God. Study the word of God. Put it in your memory and walk according to to the footsteps of Christ in order for us to achieve that perfection in life. God said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every man according as his work shall be. Reading of the Bible is considered as a bridge that we won't fall Enter into the deeps. The word of God is a light. The word of God is considered as a way in order for you and me to be with God, to be with the Lord in heaven. Read it, swallow it, eat it, and put it in your memory. I am teaching you today because. I've been reading the Word of God. I know my Bible. I know how to guide people about the Bible. I don't want to brag myself, but I have that living, presumptuous living connection with my God. I could cite to you many experiences in life during my ministry in the Philippines. There was a time when seven of my men were driving from the funeral service. And the other fellow said, Pastor, I think we have to stay here for a while because the sun is very hot. I said, let us stay under this coconut tree. And you know what happened, my friends? Seven of us, we're fed by God with seven young coconuts fell from that, uh, from that coconut tree. I said to my people, please don't come near because there might be somebody who is cutting and cleaning the coconut tree. And they said, no, pastor, nobody is there. So I said, since we are seven, God gave us seven Young coconut tree, get one, each one of you. So they were happy at the time that they were fed by the angel of the Lord. I tell you, my friends, so many things to say about my experiences in life. But God knows, and the Lord will come very soon. Make yourself ready for the coming of God. Don't waste your time. Don't listen to the guidance and the statement of the devil. Our mind have 10 to 15 billion of cells. Doctors and nurses knew that. But sometimes, these 15 billion of cells will be under the supervision of the 3,000 taste buds in your tongue. What do you mean by that? When you are accustomed to drinking, I, I experienced that myself. 
it seems that there is somebody that is pulling you going to the bar and drink alcoholic beverages. These 15 billion of cells, this is the poem. This is our brain that will really, that is holding and moving the destiny of our spiritual life. The devil wants to have possession of your brain. God wants to have the possessions of our brain. And if you will not succumb your spirit upon the guidance of God, we will really be dragged away from him. Merry questions to January, where is this January? I requested the sister of our house to sing. And while listening to her song, please try to meditate clearly, attentively, that will guide us our way to perfection. one of you today 
that the Lord I know is moving your heart today. I am appealing to each one of you, my dear brethren. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than for a rich man to be standing at the center of hell. Please stand, my friends and brethren. Please stand. Thank you so much for your commitment to the Lord today. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a true scepter. Thou lovest righteousness, therefore thou art worthy of praise. Here we have a true foundation. Here the foundation of the lost Christ, our rock in our salvation, Christ the name of which we boast. Lamb of God for sinners wounded, sacrifice to cancel guilt, None shall ever be confounded, those who put their trust on him. O oh God in heaven, I am praying for your people today. Please, O oh God, as we go to our respective homes, I pray that the Spirit be filled with the Word of God and the power of the Spirit that will make us stand against the wiles of the devil. Keep us safe, O Father in heaven. I trust thee, and I present to you today, O God, members of this church, especially our loving pastor John Tilley and his family. God in heaven, thank you for listening to us. In Jesus' loving name, amen.